1982, I was here in Biddyford Public Library, working in the Chope Collection, which was housed in a different room then. It was a much quieter place then. But um, working on local history, and the librarian, Mr. Jeff Green at the time, got to know me, was very supportive, and took me into his office at the back and had showed me these wonderful volumes. This one here, he said, you might like this, and you might like this volume here as well. And it was very exciting. These were, here we are, Trial and Condemnation of the Witches. And that was my introduction to the story and led to me wanting to know more because I realised that this story had aroused interest over the next two or three hundred years, but had never really been studied, analysed, understood, put into context. And so he allowed me to have photocopies, but photocopies had just been invented really in 1982, it's a fairly new technology. And I started finding out more with the help of these collections, with the help of the library service, and analysing the stories. Mm. This wonderful volume here, it's, uh, what's valuable is, I think it's basically the witchcraft trials took place and the women yeah, were taken to Exeter, sentenced and executed. And then there was a questioning, what had happened, and, and then self-justification came in. John Hill, the town clerk of Biddyford, and the local justices of the peace, who were actually the, like the town councillors, wanted to justify what had happened and prove they weren't reactionary weirdos. And they basically gave the bundle of statements, like what we'd call the police statements, were given to a, a printer who printed them in a rather random order. They're higgledy-piggledy, out of chronolog chronological order. So what I did was to start reassembling the story in the right order, trying to make sense of what happened, find out about the people. They really were real people. Who were the characters in the story? What was going on? And that was how the book came about.